Okay, guys, we're going to try and do a real quick one here. Uh, the the PS5 announcement, whatnot, just happened uh, yesterday, June 11th. So hopefully I can get this video out, in, you know, in a relatively timely manner. I jotted down some notes because, uh, honestly, the Jessica had the stream on in the background. I've been editing videos and helping uh, the kids when I can, so... If a game caught my interest, I tried to um, take a second and, and look at it. So admittedly, I didn't get to look at every single game that was on here. Like Straight is a game that Jessica keeps trying to get me to look at, but I haven't had time to go look at it yet. Uh, so keep that in mind that I didn't have enough time to look at every single game. The next thing I'm going to point out is that this list is just for the games that were revealed today. So while Last of Us 2 is in my top 5 most anticipated PS5 games, it won't make this list in particular. All right, so I'd like to go ahead and knock out some honorable mentions. And there are plenty of honorable mentions. I think Sony showed off 26 games or something like that. And 20 of them or so had where I was like, I would play that game. I would play it. I don't necessarily know if I would buy it. I don't know how much money I would spend on it, but I would play it. Uh, so I'm going to start the honorable mentions off with probably the biggest sin of this list, and that's... Um, Horizon Zero Dawn West, I believe, was the name of it. Now, that looked like Sony's showstopper, the game that makes you go, this is why you're going to buy a PS5. It's for Horizon Zero Dawn. But honestly, I never played the first one. I don't own a PS4. I've, I've hardly even played a PS4 in my life. So, hey, Elizabeth. How are you doing tonight? So, when it, and when it got time, like... Horizon was this, it looks like this really massive, awesome game. I think Sony is going to push this game maybe more than they're even going to push The Last of Us or a potential God of War game. Uh, I think it's, will you get where you're going, Missy? <laughs> I, think, or I think Horizon Zero Dawn is a game they really want to be their Mario or something like that. At least that's the impression I got. But I didn't play the first one, so I'm one of those guys where... I people keep telling me, oh, you had to play Mass Effect 2. I'm like, well, I had to play Mass Effect 1. And everyone's like, no, you don't. You you can skip Mass Effect 1. And I'm just too stubborn. I feel like, no, I had to play Mass Effect 1. Uh, same with Dragon Age. So I will get around to playing the second Horizon Zero Dawn. But I got to play the first one today. Uh, so not today, but I had to play the first one first. So for today... Uh, Yeah, as I was saying, for today, it, it'll just be a spectacle that I marvel at in the distance. Also, I'm going to try to keep my dogs calm, but with Elizabeth jumping in my lap, they're like, we gotta, got to talk. Uh, next, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this name, Kina or Kina maybe, Bridge of Spirits. I did not watch the preview for this live during the stream. I was watching some other people's reactions and some other people's thoughts, and... One person mentioned that they were super hyped for this game, so I went and I skimmed through the trailer, and it looks cool. It really does look cool. Um, I, it didn't crack my top five, obviously, but I took I took notice of it. And as we get closer to games coming out and the PS5's release, it's going to be a game that I have my eye on, basically. We'll see what becomes of it, uh, but I have high hopes for it. I hope it does well. I hope it turns out to be this cool, independent game that some people have it uh have it pegged to be because that would be really awesome and lastly for my honorable mentions sack boy a big adventure this game from what i can tell looks very similar to new super lucky tail and i love new super lucky tail it looks like a game that's going to switch between 3d levels and 2d levels and honestly i'm just a fan of that uh like the super mario 3d land and world games have grown on me new super lucky tail has grown on me so if this is a game in that style where some levels I'm playing 3D, some levels I'm playing 2D, I'm gonna think it's pretty cool. So the the trailer had me enough to go, this is an honorable mention. In fact, I was flirting with this being in the top five, but at the end of the day, it just didn't make room or didn't make the cut. And that's because with number five, this is a more dedicated 3D platform and that's Astro's Playroom. That may seem absurd, it looks like, Ooh, is this going to be just kind of like a tech demo game? 
Um, is this just going to be something for kids? I don't know. But to me, it looked like every bit of something that I want in a game like this. It looked bright. It looked colorful. It looked like a 3D platformer. I saw it. I immediately was like, what is this? I know it's like, um, what was this on the PS4 maybe as a um, virtual reality game maybe? I don't know. But yeah, this is this is number five. And I think some people are going to look at this and they're going to look at some of the games that didn't make the top five and they're going to be confused. But that's the gamer that I am. I love Odyssey. I love A Hat in Time. I even go to bat for ukulele. I just like 3D platformer games. That's that's really my bread and butter. If this game controls well, I'll be picking it up. Now, whether I get it as a day one release or not depends entirely on the price versus the length of the game. Because from what I saw, honestly, it didn't look like a $60 game. But we'll see. If this is a $30 game, maybe, maybe. It looks like something that would come out on the Switch for $30, like a Spyro or Crash Bandicoot kind of game. So time will tell. Number four is actually a game I had at number two, and then I thought about it, and it just worked its way down to number four. And that's Deathloop, which the setup for the game is fine and interesting. I don't really want to dive too much into anything, but the idea here is you're stuck on an island where everybody wants to kill you, so your goal is to kill everybody, but they have a protector or a defender whose sole mission is to kill you, so basically, every time you guys kill each other, you just reset a time loop. It's interesting. Um, we'll see as far as like the story and the setup. I don't really care about that. Okay, What I'm here for is the gameplay, because it looks like a mix between Bioshock and Dishonored. And it said Bethesda was the publisher, I think. So maybe this is the same team that worked on Dishonored. Uh, I'm not sure that much, but... He, he, with his right arm, had his weapons, and with his left arm, he had some kind of, like, magical powers, like in Bioshock. So, dude, I am here for this game. I hope it lives up to the potential. I'm, of course, waiting for a next-gen Bioshock game, but in the meantime, this looks could tide me over. So, it looks, it looks good. Number three, Resident Evil. I was actually going back and forth and back and forth with this and Deathloop at number two, and as you guys can see... Neither of them were able to hold on to that number two spot. Now, Resident Evil is the only survival horror I series I really care about. I don't play um, Silent Hill, any of those other games. I, I honestly couldn't even name another survival horror game. Resident Evil is really it, but it's it's a super nostalgic series for me. My dad played the first three on PlayStation, and then I started playing four on gamecube or the ps2 so i ended up missing seven but i loved one through five and i thought six was okay at times the leon story is really cool uh the chris story is like just adrenaline through the whole thing so i don't hate six for what it is if the camera work was serviceable i'd even say six was a good game but the camera is really bad on that one but uh eight I, like is this is this a sequel to seven in a way uh you know like one and two are only sequels in that two comes after one not that it has anything to do with one so is seven and eight the same way uh i'm pretty sure chris shows up and considering i've never played seven i don't know what that means if that means anything so my uh whatever i think a background noise just kicked on but that's okay um, so I, I actually was watching this video and I thought it looked like a prequel, but I'm pretty sure some text pops up that says finishing his story or something like that. So this could be set in the present for all I know, but I could be wrong. Anyway, the atmosphere looks like it's building on seven. We'll see if the gameplay stays true to, um, seven's return to survival horror roots after four, five, and six were kind of uh, a departure from that style. Either way. Resident Evil 8 cracks in at number three. Number two is Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Uh, considering the only PS4 game that I've ever played is Spider-Man, you can bet I am hyped for this sequel. For those of you who do not know, I personally collect comic books, and Spider-Man is one of my favorite characters. Pretty cliched, but I love Spider-Man. 
And honestly, I'm trying to get more into Miles Morales. I don't know too much about him. I don't really have too many comics of his, but I loved from what I saw of him in the game. My friend and I, who's also a big Spider-Man fan, the one who let me borrow his PS4 to play this game, we were talking about how it's probably setting up for Miles Morales. But, dude, I, I played this game last summer, and just the other day, I, I was texting my friend, and I was like, dude, I'm so hyped for Spider-Man 2. I am so hyped. Uh, not to get into spoilers, but stuff with Harry, like I, I that, that's got to be going somewhere, right? Like they can't just forsake everything they did with Peter just to shoehorn Miles in as the main character. So I really want to see us build off of Peter and uh, MJ's discoveries. So I, I, I'm just really excited to see what they're going to do with Spider-Man Two. Uh, Insomniac is one of my favorite game studios too. Uh, just in case you didn't know. Insomniac was working on Spider-Man, so I'll probably pick this one up day one, as long as, you know, finance is allowed, and, uh, you know how I just said Insomniac's one of my favorite developers, well, number one is Ratchet and Clank, duh, <laughs> this was easily the best looking game, maybe not as epic in scale as Horizon Zero Dawn, but again, Insomniac are professionals, they have mastered the Ratchet and Clank games, and I expect this to be a total return to form from the PS2 days. I think, I think, uh, thank you, truck. I think Ratchet and Clank has kind of got lost in the shuffle. It was really big during the PS2 era, as well, where that was the genre. Uh, you know, like action platform games like Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank were everywhere. When first person shooters started emerging, uh, those kind of games. Fell into the line, uh, fell out of the limelight. I mean, think about how many action platformer games just don't exist. That's why it's kind of impressive that uh, Uncharted has done as well as it did, and Tomb Raider has done as well as it did because uh, Ratchet and Clank fell from graces, Jack and Daxter fell from graces, Prince of Persia fell from graces, Sly Cooper fell from graces, and then out of that emerged Uncharted and Tomb Raider. And really, the big distinction I see there is. A lot of those games that I just named had kid characters, whereas in the PS3, like Tomb Raider, Grown Woman, Uncharted, Grown Man, may have had something to do with it. But either way, Ratchet and Clank is is back for PS5, and it. I know people are probably gonna say Horizon Zero Dawn, and maybe Last of Us, but Ratchet and Clank to me looks like the best game on the PS5. I think it will be remembered as a slam dunk, easily one of the best early PS5 games. So that's my list. Um, it's like 3 in the morning. Uh, and we just finished recording some really cool West vs. Jess stuff. If you're new here, we are traditionally a Let's Play channel, but we are doing more of these talking head style videos. I'm not always this tired <laughs> in the video, but... Uh, I just really wanted to take a couple minutes and, and talk about it. I am a little tired, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I have not owned a PlayStation console during its lifespan since the PS2. That was the last time I owned a PlayStation console when it was still relevant. I got a PS3 like last year. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm excited. We're going to try and pre-order this. I'm going to try and get Ratchet and Clank the day it comes out. I'm going to try to get Spider-Man the day it comes out. And I know Jessica wants to get Resident Evil when that comes out. So, I mean, we are, we are legitimately excited for this console. Uh, so I hope you guys are too. And I hope you're looking forward to it. We'll see if Xbox can do anything to retaliate because uh, I, I was excited for Xbox. They announced that they were getting some studios to do some first-party games, and I was like, that's good because Microsoft normally cares about, look how cool our console is. We don't have games, but we have such a cool console. And then they were talking about buying studios to make first-party games. And I was like, oh, that's, that's really good, Microsoft. You finally care about games. And then Sony was like, yeah, but... Look at everything we have. And I was like, oh, Microsoft. That's tough. That is tough, Microsoft. But uh, that, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's it. That's it. I'm tired. <laughs> but either way, hope you guys have a good night. Thanks for watching.